These are all the guts of the question, okay? Very, very simple. It says, use the definition of a parabola and the perpendicular distance formula to find the locus of points that is equidistant from here and here. Simple, okay? So, here's the way we're going to think about this, okay? Oh, and they ask us to do something else in a minute, but we have to, we have to get the locus first, okay? This is my variable point. Right? I'm going to be the same distance to this point as I am to this line. Okay? <coughs> so I'm going to start off just by stating geometrically what the definition of a parabola is. Namely, this distance to the point, the what's it called again? The <laughs> focus, is the same as the distance to this point, which is called the? Directory. directory. Sorry, directrix. I should have said line. Okay, so there you go. There's my, like, that's my geometric statement, right? Look, I've got lengths of intervals here, okay? And now off I go with my coordinate geometry methods to actually evaluate this thing, okay? So on the left-hand side, I just have distance between two points. I'm going to have, what am I going to have underneath the square root? Looks like an x plus 1 because there's a double negative. Plus y minus 1. Y take away 1, very good. All squared, okay? <coughs> and then on the right-hand side, and they've, they've actually clued you into this, you need the perpendicular distance formula coming in, right? Because I'm comparing a point to a line. In order to compare the point and the line, I can't use the line in its current form, can I? What do I have to do to do it? Do I need it in general form? I need it in general form, which is not very difficult to do. <coughs> Excuse me, being that I have x and the negative 2 on this side, I'm just going to drag the y over there, x minus y minus 2, and then just slap it on the left-hand side. Actually, it doesn't matter which side it's on anyway. Okay, you happy with that? So there's general form, now I can pop it into the perpendicular distance form. Okay, it's just going to be x minus y minus 2, all over what? The square root of two. two. The square root of two. I'm just going to write that as a squared plus b squared down there. Okay, you happy with that? Now, at this point, just pause. Just pause. This already looks a little <coughs> bit different from the, the main sort of family of parabolas that you're dealing with because of this guy here. Right, you see this? What does this line look like? This is, this is a straight line, clearly, but it's, it's off at an angle, uh, specifically because it has a gradient of 1. It's off at a 45 degree angle from the axis. So it looks like this. Okay. There you go. There's the line. Now, the lion's share of parabolas that you'll be dealing with are having a directrix that's horizontal, and sometimes you'll have one that's vertical. Okay? But this is neither. Um, by the way, negative 1, 1. Negative one, one. You've got your focus up there, right? Now, in order to, we had a look at like just visually what this would look like. To work out what the locus will be, all you have to do is turn your head a little bit, right? It's clearly going to pass through that point that's midway between. In fact, that's something that I have to prove in a second. And then it's going to come away like that. That's weird, but it's still a parabola. It's just off at an angle, okay? Now, because it's off at an angle, it's no longer a function. Do you see that? It fails the, um, I don't think I've done quite enough of it. It's failed the vertical line test, right? Uh, if this went further around, it's going to whip up to around here. And when you put your line here, it's going to intersect twice, okay? So it's not a function. Now, that accounts for... Oh, sorry. That accounts for why when I expand here, right, what do I do from this thing? Like I've just stated the formulas. What do I have to do to both sides in order to make it workable? Square. I have to square both sides, right? So let's, let's do a couple of things here. That's what, that's, what, that's what I meant to say. Um, here, perfect square, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Another perfect square, do it for me. Y squared, y squared is 2y plus 1. Okay. <coughs> On the right hand side, this guy here, we're not used to having to deal with this guy over here, right? We usually have, because it's usually a horizontal line, we usually have like y minus 2, or y plus 1, or something like that, depending on its position. And when we square that, it just ends up sort of cancelling with one of these guys, right? Like your y squared disappears, which is why you have a y equals x squared normal happy parabola, okay? But here I don't have that, right? When I square this out, I'm just going to do it long here. I'm going to get this mess, okay? So this is what makes this question look a little bit, hmm, have I done it right? And the answer is you have done it right. Remember, you're not going to get a function. So you should expect something that's a little bit messier. We can still deal with the algebra in exactly the same way. Just don't be freaked out, okay? That's the numerator. What's on my denominator? Two. It's a two, because it's the square root of two, and I squared it. Okay, now from here, like actually, there's nothing hard conceptually. It's just that it looks strange because of what you have over there on the right hand side. But I can still work with it just the same. I'm going to do two things. On the left hand side, I notice I've got 
two like terms, it's just the one and the one. So they're going to become plus two. But at the same time, <coughs> excuse me, I want to get rid of that um, denominator over there. That's just gross. So I'll combine those like terms and I'll multiply by two. Are you happy with that? What does that leave me with? I'm going to have 2x squared, 4x. I'm going to have 2y squared minus 4y. That was 2 when I added it. And then it's going to be 4 now that I doubled it. You happy with that? Okay, now this part over here, well, I didn't leave myself enough space. Uh, this part over here, I've written it in longhand just to make sure I do the expansion right. Like you wouldn't believe how many people will just expand this incorrectly because it's got more terms than you're used to, right? It's the same thing. You've got to go first term times this one and then this one and then this one and then you do the second term times this one, this one, this one and then you do the third term. How many terms will there be when I finish it all up? Nine. There will be three times c, which is nine. Okay. So let's just quickly do this. I'm going to get x by x, which is x squared. Take away x y. Take away two x. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to do all the negative y's. Watch out for the negative. I'm going to have negative x y plus y squared plus two y. Yep. And now I'll do the last one, uh, which is this negative two times all of those guys. Again, watch the negative negative two x. Plus 2y plus 4. Okay, gross, but it's fine. Like, it's just, it's just a bit of numerical muscle work, right? In fact, there's a whole bunch of things I can cancel out here, right? What kinds of things can I cancel? Okay, I see a 4 here and a 4 over there. So, bam, it's gone. Okay, what else do I see? 4y. Okay, now just before I before I start doing some of this, right? I just generally, generally speaking, I tend to go in order from because again, a lot of this, and it's the same reason why I expanded this. This is like, you can put this under the category of exam technique if you like. There's nothing wrong with doing this another way. It's just I found this is less error prone. I tend to go in order. Um, you just need some order, any order you like, so long as it's logical, um, so that you don't end up missing things. My order tends to be from degree, okay? So I look at the highest powers and then I work my way down, okay? So for instance, I see squared terms. It's just easy because I can count down quite easily. So I've got a 2x squared term here and I've got an x squared term over there. Do you see that? Okay. So if I lose this one, then I'll lose one over here. Yeah? Is that okay? Um, again, staying with degree, I've got 2y squared over here and I've got one over there. So if I lose one here, I'll lose one there. You got with that? Then I climb down because I've got no more squared terms. I see there's 4x here, and there's take away 4x here. So things I'm going to cancel, right? I've got uh, minus 4y, yep. <clears throat> and then I have, here it is, plus 4y here. Again, things are not going to cancel. They're opposite signs, right? So in fact, I think, you correct me if I'm wrong, I think I've actually just eliminated all the things that are just going to straight cancel. Is that all right? And now I should just combine them all on one side. <clears throat> we were part way through the way saying I've got my x squared and my y squared already. They're just hanging out there. 4x, you've got to add 4x to both sides, so I'm going to get 8x. You've got take away 4y and you've got to take away another 4y, so I'm going to have minus 8y. Yep. And then what's left? Plus 2xy. Add 2xy to both sides and that should leave me with 0. Yep. <clears throat> Is there anything I can do to that? I could, I could complete the square on these guys. There's not that much point because this guy's going to be hanging out on the side anyway, which I should expect because if I didn't have him there, what, what is that? Come on, that's a circle, right? But this is emphatically not a circle, okay? So in fact, more or less, that's it. There's not much neater you can do to that. That is the equation of the locus, okay? Uh, like I said, we are not used to the presence of this guy or this guy. But it's because it's not a function, which we expected right from the get-go when we did a very rough sketch. Okay, does that make sense? We're not quite finished. There's one more thing that they asked us to do. They say explain without referring <coughs> excuse me, to its equation why each parabola passes through the origin. Um, they give you two parabolas, that's why they say each. Um, now, I sort of drew it roughly to scale. So it's like, ta-da, there it is. That's not what they refer to. They said at the beginning, use the definition of a parabola and the perpendicular distance formula. Okay, so how would I go about proving this? It's not complicated. You create a circle. Now, I can't, I can't substitute in, I can't substitute into this, right? Because they said don't use the equation. 
But what I can use is the fact that if it's on the locus, right, it should obey this, right? Like that's where I started. That's not the equation of the locus, that's the definition <coughs> of the locus, okay? So I'm going to take advantage of this. That is 0, 0. Okay. If I can find this distance and find this distance, what am I expecting? They should be the same. I don't know that they're equal yet. So I can't use this as my first line. I'm just going to find out what that is, and then find out what this is, and they should be the same, right? The only difference is I, I have a particular point P. Um, in fact, because the origin, I'm going to call it O. So I'm going to say S O, right? What's the length of so? There's this, this point here, and I'm just comparing to the origin, right? This is super easy. Negative one, take away zero. One take away zero. You okay with that? Come on, you can tell me that distance. It's root two. Happy with that. Okay, and then I just compare to the straight line, which I'm going to need perpendicular distance form, which is here, right? But again, that's really easy. I'm comparing from the distance, the perpendicular, the directrix to the origin, okay? Perpendicular distance formula. Now here, it was x take away y take away 2. What difference have I got here? 0, 0, minus 2. Yeah, 0, minus 0, minus 2, divided by? Square root of 2. Um, this is the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2, divided by root 2, which sounds like root 2 to me. So, Notice I did each distance separately, right? So therefore I can say SO equals DO, right? Which means that O satisfies the locus of the parabola, right? Therefore, O is on the parabola. And the origin is part of the locus because it satisfies the geometric property I was interested in. Okay?